Hey everybody, I'm Brad, and this is Cyberfluidics from Tattoo Smart. So once you've established your design, you might want to see what it really looks like on a body. In this video, I will teach you how to use the Protoplast digital tattoo models and client photos to simulate real tattoos on 3D body pose models and photos of your client. This is a longer video than the previous episodes in the series, but I promise it's worth it. Let's get started. So for this video, I want to show you how I go about making these tattoo drafts. These, these digital images here that this is not a, this isn't a tattoo. This is actually design that I've made right here. You see it separated from the image. And I'm going to show you how to get this fake kind of tattoo look and be able to use that actually as you've physically draw into it so you don't have to come back and adapt that layer to it and do some other kind of crazy post-op stuff. Uh, I'm also going to show you how to do this to a protoplast model. You can see here, you see some of the skin tone in that dark area. I made it pretty dark. Uh, keep in mind this only works in black and white. And with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started here. So I have one here prepared. Just going to pretend like that's not there real, real fast. So what you want to do, go ahead and select your image from wherever, from your protoplast you have here. I picked out leave this one right here. But what you want to do first is select white because in your layer, you don't want any transparency to be here. So go ahead and fill this with white. Just drag it onto it, let it go. Make sure it's white. Yes, it is. Now let's choose black and with the protoplast selected, pop it in. And then what I did is I adjusted it to size. Something about like that. That's what you want. Or whatever you want to work with, you know. Next thing to do is I want to make something to register to make sure that all these changes are going to be happening. So what I'm going to do, and all this really means is that I'm going to take, let's take one of my brushes. Peruse through here again. How about, let's see memory, what that looks like. That looks good to me. So, I'm just going to fill up a little bit of area here and you'll see why in just a moment. So you see here that it is 100% black and what we want to do with this design layer, well, let's call it design and to call this layer skin. It's a really good idea to label all of your layers, especially if you're going to have more than, especially once you get to the point where you have to start to scroll through them. All right, now take your skin layer and change this to multiply. All right, you see what's happening there. What this does, what multiply does is it basically just, it, it only adds darkness, if that makes sense. So literally if I, this is what, this is the layer underneath and then this is the layer above showing through. And if I come to the layer underneath and if I want to actually paint with white, you see here, 
what's going on there. Now let's actually paint with white onto our skin layer. I'll be able to kind of see what's happening here. So it's not adding, it's not, it won't add white to the layers below it, you see. It'll only cut it out of it. Anyway, maybe I'll find a better way to explain that later and edit it in. Maybe not. So take your skin layer, duplicate this. Now, change the blending mode to lighter color right here. Right above add and right below add and above overlay. What we want to do now is we don't have to make a selection around here, but I do like to do that. Let me show you how to do it without that real fast. So just make sure your top layer is selected. I'm going to say tattoo skin. And with that selected, come to your adjustments, curves. Make sure you click, click layers and just grab it from the middle and drag it down. You can see it already working. I'm going to show you why I do it in just a moment here. You can see here. So it's not hanging out over the edges here. And that is because this top image has that perfect white showing. But as soon as I break that, it'll start to fall. So what I can do, actually, you know what? We well, might be able to do this without messing with the layers. Let's bring it over here and then drag that down. Oh, look at there. Just dodged it. So no reason to do it the other way. Uh, but I will show you show that to you anyways. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the area out around. Now click invert. So what's going to happen now is we're only going to be adjusting everything that is inside the opposite layers that we selected. So now I can take this white and drag it all the way down and it won't affect the, affect the background. This is useful if you really want to get rid of some pesky highlights that kind of tend to show up. You see like this, if you want to get rid of some of that shine, just drag that down a little bit. And I leave, like to leave just enough so that it, the form is still visible inside of there. Now, there's a lot of other ways we can do that. Do this. I'm going to go ahead and show you another way through this live photo here. Let's, let me drag this out of here and go ahead and delete all of this. All right. So let's say you take photos of your clients to work on or you have the opportunity to do that, which is, I always think that's a good idea if you can do it. So I've got this set to multiply. Let me brush in some random design in the background real quick. Let's go with that. And again, I'm going to throw this below the skin layer and it's already set to multiply here. If it's not, make sure it is. Now duplicate your skin layer. Now I'm not going to bother with the selection around the outside of this. I'm going to go ahead and go through with it the rest of the way. Let's see lighter color. There it is, not color dodge, lighter color. Let's find hue, saturation, brightness. Let's try that. Saturation all the way down and brightness. Let's turn that down. Sometimes a little bit of that kind of blue or gunmetal kind of color can look really good. So if you want to do that, just raise up your saturation. I like to raise it up just enough so that I can see what I'm doing. And somewhere between that, somewhere in that kind of teal kind of zone. Now I drop that saturation down all the way and bring it back up just 
until it looks about right, which is right there for my eyes right now. All right, so now how do we get rid of all this? Well, we could mask or erase out every single layer as we go along, uh, that would be terrible. But what I'm gonna show you this time, now I'm, I'm always learning new ways around this. So, but this is what I've found works pretty well for me for Procreate. Let's make a new layer. I'm gonna drag this below the design layer and turn, come back to my design layer here and turn on clipping mask. And you see what this is doing is it's actually referencing the layer below here, for what's going to show up. And I believe you can use any color for this. I'm going to use some white here and any brush will do any brush with a nice hard edge. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to paint in the entire area of the, of the body. This looks a little cleaner sometimes if you dodge some of the clothes. If I were to be showing this to a client, I would probably not do this. But if I'm going to show it to the internet, just as a design without an owner, I'd probably just clean it up like that so it looks nice. So that it looks like someone is really wearing it. All right. Now, you see I'm done here. But this is the advantage of this. Let me go back to my design layer and I'm going to grab it. And you see here that it is it's never going to cross over into the areas that you didn't paint. Make sure when you're doing this that you're working only in either. Uh, I just use white, but uh, it, it's it works a lot like an alpha log. So you want it to either be transparent or filled. Let me go into this just a little bit more here and show you a little bit more in this stage what can happen because I've been meaning to make a make a uh, make a video showing how I do some of this more like kind of body form type of things. This is my second or maybe third take. I'm not sure, uh, but I accidentally deleted my clipping layer right here in the last video. So we're going to start start fresh from the beginning. Let's fill our substrate layer that we're going to make with white. I'm going to, I'm going to use pseudo layering for this one. And I'm actually going to go ahead and make a new brush. I think maybe let me peruse around for a little minute. I'll get back to you. Yeah, I'm going to make a new brush here. Let me choose, uh, which one of these do I want? Let me choose a large discharge. I drag this over to substrate. Come into it. Put on my little substrate label for it and change the grain pattern here. Multiply. All right. Make my brush large, shrink down my image, put down a nice even coating. Not too heavy, not too soft. It should look so that if you squint your eyes and look at the layer sample, layer example right here, it should look about 50-50 gray. Go ahead and add the clipping mask, make a new layer. Go 
So this is white since we want both layers for pseudo filtering to be totally filled and add a clipping mask to this. This is what's great about clipping masks is that they can all refer to one single same layer down here or same mask. And that is so useful if you're working on a, a smaller capacity iPad like I am. Okay, so now let me come to airbrushing or any soft brush that you like. And let me actually use a real black, make sure I'm on the hard mix layer and what will be the hard mix. There we go. And if I want to limit exactly how narrow these um, openings will get, I can actually select a, a true gray like this. And you see what happens there. You can have really exact control over the widths that are produced in pseudo layering. So, all right, now let me grab my substrate. I want to move this around. Let me back up a little bit. There we go. I don't worry too much about warping around the body if I'm going to be doing a stencil uh, because I'll usually have a, a, a sort of physical map uh, drawn out from their body to help me out with that. And But if I'm going to be making something just for uh, just for showing people online while design, I will actually do that. But I'm not going to worry about that right now. Let's go with that, and I'm actually going to darken it up a little bit more too. A really large brush so I can get these sort of even strokes through it. And use a slightly lighter one here. Almost, almost totally white. That's interesting. All right, let's add some layers on top of this. How about some, some contrasting kind of elements in here? Let's find, I like these a lot. Let's try medium version. Oh yeah, cool. So I'm gonna add this in like this. And it's a little bit light. Let's drop the opacity. And I'm actually gonna I'm not gonna come I'm gonna come back and change this later. I'm gonna show you something extra here. That's one way to get a gray tone though. And let's go to our what does this look like? Nah. How about hexagon? Nah. Pardon me while I... Oh, let's try the one that is set to orient to screen. That's cool. I have to redo that though. So if I'm going to do, do, use orient to screen, you got to keep it exactly where it's at. I want these lines to be thick enough. I'm going to be, you know, this would be tattooed. And if I, if I really plan on making this to be tattooed, I would want these lines to be of a decent thickness. Um, for one, so that for the spread of the tattoo, but mostly 
if I'm going to be making a stencil out of this, I really, really want, don't want that, those stencils to bleed too much. Now let's add a dot to this. Ooh, need to make a new version of this. It looks like I'm going to be showing you everything that was put into these other videos here. Turn on, orient the screen, put on my TV. Ooh, you know what? Let's make this a new layer, actually, because I'm going to be doing some tricks. Make this a little bit bigger. Sounds a little more substantial. Have a have them kind of come off of the the edges of this. Like maybe the hexagons to sort of like as it dissipates out and out around its edges to introduce some of these dots to show some of that happening. Now let's add, shit, let's do some more. Add another one. Don't move the canvas if you're going to be using orient to screen. Cube. I gotta make a new one. So let's do that. I know I make lots of changes to these brushes, but you know, at almost 300 brushes in the set, like I, I just, I couldn't include every single variation of these that were possible. There we go. All right, now I'm going to grab my eraser. I'm actually going to use a hard, hard eraser. I'm going to erase out these little dangly bits. So you might have noticed that this brush set um, does produce produce these geometric effects, but it doesn't. They don't do not always emerge in a smooth symmetrical kind of way. They kind of have this goopiness to them. You see how this is kind of, this is sort of kind of gravity to one side, depending on how much buildup was on one side or the other. And, you know, um, you know, I wouldn't have it this way if, if I could, but you know, I really don't mind it too much. No, not too much at all. It's, uh, it's something I'm willing to Oh, Here we go. Oops. Now let's erase this. Add a little bit there. Add a little bit there. There are pros and cons to it, anyways. Just a little bit. I don't want it to extend all the way out to the edges of that. That looks pretty good to me. I'm going to make one new layer again. I'm going to do the right side. Turn on orient the screen onto a copy that I am making right now. Make sure I'm on a new layer. I'm all good to go. Mm, I don't know about that. Too many of those. Well, actually, that might be okay. So let's separate some of these layers out so we can see what's happening by darkening some things. Well, problem with the, this goes back to what I was going to talk about by changing the when I change the opacity of this organic layer here. So what I'm going to show you now is that if I try to change, I'm going to go ahead and break this view here so you can see what's happening. If I try to change the opacity of these, you see, you get some of this, you start to see some of those, the, the under layers and under there. And what I want is a flat tone. So what I'm going to do, the, this layer down here is fine to be on a low opacity and that's 
because it's the bottom layer, but these top layers are what's going to have to change. This one, for instance. So what I'm going to do to get, do this is, you might have heard me, remember me mentioning before, talking about using grays. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to adjustments, hue, saturation, brightness, and actually turn those, these white lines into gray lines. And you see, you see it at work here. You see that the, that the lines from the organic pattern are interrupted by this. But now you see it's made a second problem. You see how here it's showing up in these areas that I would want negative. So change the blending mode to lighten. Look at that. All right. Where are our dots? Here they are. So I want those to be, you know what? I think I'm okay with those being completely skin. And now let's look at the sides of our cubes. You know, maybe let's get rid of that. It's already getting so complicated here. And you know what? Maybe this one would be cool with a little bit of transparency. Yeah, why not? It's only a few of them. You'd have to go in there and, you know, fiddle out all those little half, half tones and things. I think that's a pretty good stopping point for this. You can see how quickly it can get really complicated in there. You know, if, you know, maybe, maybe there'll be one more tutorial with a skull. Maybe not. Maybe I'll have to release that later after the set comes out. But either way, I think this about wraps up most of the things that I really have to say about all this. And it was so many small things that it was really difficult for me to make like one big long tutorial that actually included it all. I had to make all these little separate sections that uh, you probably should have already watched. Thank you so much for watching all these. If you have any questions about any of this, just feel free to reach out to me personally. I'll help you as best as I can.